Any reason why a person might feel disconnected from the shaykh and the teachings? They feel disconnected? There could be many, many reasons to feel disconnected. But uh, generally there's a state of euphoria. You feel a connection, you feel everything's great, you feel so much energy and then life in Allah begins the testing. The testing comes and begins the grinding and uh, everything that happens in life and if the practices are not strong and consistent then the student can begin to feel that they're not feeling anything. They stop doing their practices as strong as they were doing, they're not feeling the energies. But this was not about feeling, this was about a love and a relationship of love with Allah and His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad And love has to be real and not for something. The byproduct is the feelings of goodness but if Allah doesn't want to give it to us, our love shouldn't be based on that and they'll actually begin to train, are you doing this for a feeling or you're doing this for love? And I said, no yeah, I'm doing it for love, if I don't have to feel it's not my business to feel. I'm just doing this to get the nazar of Prophet I want to do this good deed that Prophet be happy with me. I want to do this action and this amal and this whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to think every day how can I have the nazar of Prophet on me. And anytime I follow shaitan I have to know that that sayyat and that the sin it cuts the line of the feeling of that connection. One it doesn't really cut the connection but what happens is you have a, a bubble and a shield of protection. As soon as we do sins the shield opens, the shaitans come in and they begin to interfere with their connection and make everything to be feeling distant and difficult. So that why? So that we'll cut off and vanish. But you're like an astronaut on the outside of a ship, if you feel that you're going to cut your line, you're not cutting the shaykh, you're cutting yourself from the ship, means you float into the abyss of nothingness. And that's why shaitan is doing that to people, to make them feel you're nothing, you're nothing, you're no one, you're no one, cut your line, cut your line. But you're, the shaykh is not cutting, you cutting the line and trying to go into the abyss of nothingness. That's why then the tariqah comes and teaches, no, no, keep consistent, do your practices, don't worry about feeling, not feeling, just try to build the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Anytime Prophet feels there's a sincerity and there's a need, the fires will come, the energies will come, the realities will come and just keep ourselves to be consistent and good inshaAllah. If we are continuously sinning where people are emailing and we give an example and we're thankful for everybody who emails, we're not mocking or ridiculing or anything. I'm one whom myself sinned all my life and we went through all of these types of difficulties. But when somebody is emailing and saying, I'm continuously sinning, I'm continuously sinning, give me an awrad to recite. We've described before, it's not only the awrad to recite, you have to give. Your sins are like pus, you know like a body that's filled with bacteria. Have you seen somebody who gets sick and all of a sudden there's like a huge blister? There was on one of these medical shows, you can't stand watching it because you get so scared of life because in any one second you, something can change in your life. But the person had accumulated so much bacteria and blistering, do you think that just the medicine was going to fix it? You're beyond the state of the pill taking it, right? So the abscess has to be cleaned. They have to vacate that, they have to cut that for all the bacteria to come out. Once it comes out then with medicine everything works. So it's a whole formula that Allah wound. If you're still sinning and things are not changing you gotta give. And what, what you're collecting of your life and your rizq and your sustenance and what you eat and what you do, it is compounding upon negativity with an insan. So when insan gives and when insan prays, when insan does zikr, does the whole formula that Allah it's like a perfect patient. They're doing all of the aspects, they cut the abscess, they took their medicines, they eat a good diet and the healing begins. Anytime somebody keeps saying, I'm, I'm having all these sins, I'm having all these sins, I'm, okay yeah because your rizq not being cleaned. What you eat and what you bring into your existence is filled with badness, filled with bad characteristics. Filled and literally filled with all sorts of 
uh, germs and badness. And then you begin your zikrs, your practices, your muraqabah and all your practices inshaAllah. Sayyidi, is there any difference between online connection with the shaykh and direct connection? An online connection is a direct connection. Mm. Yeah. Where we, I think we've talked before that people think that, oh I have to come and sit with you for two weeks and get all your secrets, it's not going to happen. You're not going to sit with me for two years and get all my secrets. So it's not, that's not the system that you're going to sit and I'm going to download into your heart every reality you want. It's, it's not about that, it's about taking a life of, I'm going to follow this tariqah. Wherever you are, you will be tested. The shaykh doesn't have to be near you at all because Allah is everywhere, is closer to you than your jugular vein. Sayyidina Muhammad is right there with your heart. The two is enough, Allah says, this is my servant, he's merely accepted you, he showed his sign of humility, he wants this path, he, he passed the test because they send a, a feeling into the heart, seek out guidance. Well, how, what were you supposed to seek out, Allah That you're going to call a number? No. So the tariqah comes, is Allah sends a sign into your heart, seek out guidance. The first sign of humility is that, I, I found you on YouTube, I'm humble. I know that I know nothing and you must have something to, to tell me of a greater reality. That step in itself is the one that Allah says, take one step I'm coming 99 towards you. As Soon as you took that step you said, I'm accepting to be tested, I'm accepting to be a lover of Sayyidina Muhammad I'm respecting and honouring these teachings, Allah will test you from wherever you are. Then you listen to the teachings at a distance. Because they say, nobody in Mecca makes hajj, so you're actually more in danger to come too close. You come too close to the shaykh, you feel familiar with him, oh he's like one of us, I don't have to listen anymore. You're actually in danger of not making hajj anymore. The more distant you are, the farther you're away, those people have a lot more himma. They have a lot more feeling of, I gotta do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do all of this, I'm gonna listen to this. And as soon as you listen to the teaching, you'll be tested in life and you understand, oh shaykh just talked about that, was be patient, have sabr, don't, don't argue, don't do all these things. So distance and time and space is irrelevant. It's a matter of how much you're going to put the whole system, take your notes and know that Allah is going to test you. And in those tests are you going to fail or are you going to pass? The good character is the pass. Doesn't matter what the excuse, why you're yelling, why you're screaming, why you're getting angry, why you want to do all of the things you want to do, Allah wants the good character. So if you're tested 10,000 miles away or two miles away, it's still a test. If you have good character Allah, was, Allah raises the servant. And then they, they're also safe from feeling that, oh I'm there all the time, I don't have to. And the farther away you are, the more support you give because you feel that, I'm distant from them, so I want to buy something from them, I want to give something to them. The one who's here all the time say, ah, I eat their food all the time, what's the big deal of barakah? So there's a danger of the, that reality. So no, you're, you're, you're good to be wherever you are and now with the world everything is frozen. So better to be online from wherever you are and enjoy the zikr and participate. Watch the YouTube channels and uh, watch the, the sobats. Take notes because most likely that talk is coming for everyone's heart, for myself first and for everyone else. What's important for us? Today's talk about that journey towards the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad the importance of the huruf and why Allah is encoding for us to learn that, to write that, to know that. These codes will be a safety for us from what's opening upon this earth inshaAllah. Say, is it possible to have your connection and shield cut through doing things that are not haram, example video games? To cut your shield and connection? No. No, what, ha what happening is you have to understand what, what, what's, what shaitan trying to do. Uh, everyone is, is going for the, the heart. Shaitan is trying to take the heart of the servant and Allah wants the heart of the servant. So what you see through your eyes. And what you do with your time is affecting your heart. So one whom sit and meditate and contemplate and try to control their eyes, when you begin to learn how to control your eye, 
What you're actually control, controlling is the cleanliness of your heart because the eyes they take in, they're like they're eating through your eyes. They say, eye candy, right? Why? Because you're eating through your eye, you're absorbing this, I'm seeing this, this clothes, I'm seeing this shoes, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing… When you're seeing all these things that shaitan wants and these kids are playing these games for hours and hours, where is the image of this eye going? It's into the hard drive which is the heart. So the hard drive is overloaded now with images. How could the heart filled with all these images sit and meditate? It can't because as soon as it sits and meditates it's shooting, it's moving the thing, the gun is moving, the car is moving, all the actual video images are being played in your heart because they were all stored in here. What you took from your eyes is stored in your heart. So if you don't take anything from your eyes your heart is clean or you'll be trained on how to clean your eyes. So every day in the shower, as soon as you go into the shower in the morning, you see yourself under the water and you ask that Allah through the water to wash away every type of badness that came upon my eye and trying to attach itself to me. And they see themselves making like a sama, a whirling in the water that wash away every type of badness that came upon my eyes of every image until they can clean their hard drive. And when they feel their heart is, is clean then they stop and they can exit their shower. So there is a way to clean but if you're not cleaning and you're trying to meditate then imagine all the images you took from your eyes they're on your hard drive and as soon as you're meditating you're trying to clean all these images and your meditation becomes, oh my god what was this, what was that, oh my god what was this? And meditation becomes all about what you're seeing in your heart. And then people say, oh that was disgusting, I'm not going to do that anymore and then they don't want to meditate. So shaitan is trying to fill the heart with inappropriate and non-significant images. And then you waste your time because you start to pray right before Asr and start to play your game right before Asr you miss your Asr. Then you keep playing the games, I miss my Asr so I'll go all the way to Maghrib. And then before you know it you even make uh, and miss the ability to make it up. And that's all shaitan wants is then to make the person depressed that they're, they're not doing this, they're not doing that. And you find that you're cutting yourself from that reality. But you haven't been cut from the shaykhs. As Salaamu um, Sayyidi, please forgive this faqir. If one is not getting a response from the email, is it part of the tarbiyah? Yeah, I think we started with that whole thing, Mr. Faqir, <laughs> that you can email all you want. It's not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Not what you want as a, re as a reply, but what is it that you're in need of? Inshallah will come to you. If you're asking something from your nafs and you're hoping to get your nafs verified, it's not going to come. If you're asking something inappropriate, not going to come. If you're asking something that it will cause a difficulty between you and the relationship with the shaykh, it's not going to come. So have sabr. If it was important and Allah wanted it to be answered, and Allah wanted you to, to receive an answer, you can believe it would come and the answer would come. If it's not appropriate or not necessary then be sabr, be patient and have sabr inshaAllah. And that's the whole test of the tariqah. So, so that's why I said, they serve dinner at the end when we were allowed to have people in life. And then people would come <laughs> angry, why is it like it's 10.30 there's no food here, there's no food here. Say exactly that's why there's no food. Because we wanted to show you this is not a food kitchen, this is not a soup kitchen, eat at home and come to zikr with a happy stomach. But it just wants to show how much people's characters are bad, impatient, angry, they, they want to control things, they want to investigate things, they want to oh have so many questions. Ask not a question to, to question a person on a knowledge but to have a higher understanding of something. So some people think it's a question but it's more like a debate that they would be asking. So many, many different aspects of what people are asking that they're sometimes not even really asking, they're trying to debate with the shaykh or glorify themselves and say, I saw this, I saw this, what does this mean? Doesn't mean anything. Sayyidi, what is the wisdom behind many pious people passing away this year? Yeah, it was a heavy year. Yeah. And Prophet described that the Qur'an would be lifted from the earth 
And Sahabi were astonished that the knowledges would be lifted from the earth in the last days. So how knowledge would be lifted from the earth? He said, because the pious whom were custodians of that reality they would die and in their place are none and that uloom begins to end onto this earth and oppression overtakes the earth. So these are all the signs of the last days and, and the difficulties that are all around us and uh, everything that happening again through the meditation, through all the spiritual practices and, and all the signs, all this certificate of vaccinations and identifications and everything that they want then inshaAllah Allah give us a, a protection and an understanding Amen. inshaAllah Amen. that people connect their hearts and more important than ever to connect your heart and to get your connection into the heavenly transmission and heavenly radio station that emanating from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that we be connected to that broadcast and that we get the information that's necessary for our existence on this earth. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.